Hello and welcome back everyone. This is your quest master Shreyansh on the quest introduction to Rust. In this specific sub quest, we'll be starting with our first Rust program. We'll see how Cargo scaffolds a folder for us, which contains the necessary code or rather just the introductory code to write any application and sets up a couple of other things for us. We'll be wrapping up by actually executing our program and checking the output. From our development environment, let's first go into the terminal where we'll type cargo new hello world tag tag bin. This will create a new folder called hello world in your current directory. In this case, my current directory is code. If you notice, Cargo has automatically created a new folder for us called hello world. If you open this folder, there is one folder within it called src or source and two other files, git ignore and cargo.toml. Let's start with git ignore. Git ignore is responsible for ensuring and telling git that anything within the target folder, which you don't see right now, but it will be there in just a bit when we compile our program or when my extension on this editor compiles the program. This directory will be created. The contents of this directory are build artifacts or pieces of compiled code created by the Rust compiler. Second is cargo.toml. Recall from subquest 2b that we installed the crates plugin on VS Code to manage this. This file contains the metadata about the application, in this case, the name, version, and edition, followed by dependencies. You will see this section get filled up with dependencies as in when we start using external libraries or as they are called in the Rust world crates. Let's move on to the source folder within which we have just one specific file called main.rs. For people coming from a Java background, this might seem a little familiar since source is essentially the folder which contains all of your application code. However, we just have a flat folder structure here with just one file called main.rs. Care should be taken to ensure that this file, the entry point to your application is always named main.rs, followed by the name of the function, which is the entry point within your application. In an application, for example, in Java, you have a public static void main. In this case, it's simply main, which does not return anything. The fn declaration, the function declaration, the keyword declaration, as well as the variable declaration is something which we'll see in the next part of this course. Right now, just understand that we have the fn keyword to denote its function followed by the name, in this case, main, that's right, followed by any list or any length of arguments as you may see necessary, in this case, it's nothing, followed by the return type, again, in this case, nothing. The body of the function is captured between these parentheses. In this case, we just have a macro a macro is denoted by an exclamation point at the end of the name of the macro. And we'll talk how macros are different from functions in a later subquest, but essentially macros are functions which write more code. They are code pieces which write more code. In this specific case, we just have a very simple hello world. If you were to run this application, you will see the phrase hello world being written to our standard out. The first thing we'll do is we'll be switching into the hello world folder, which was created by us. And then we'll be running cargo run. And as you can see, hello world has been printed out to our console. If you also notice, there are a couple of information which you may find useful. For example, this is an unoptimized build and also contains debugging information. Debugging information essentially means that it contains the name of the functions, the name of the variables as they were written in code. Lastly, you will see a new Artifact has been created, the hello world binary artifact under the debug folder. If you were to create it for a release, which is a production release, which again, we'll get into in a later subquest, this will change. We can also execute the program after compiling by going to target debug hello world. Excellent. All right then, that's all for this subquest. I hope this excites you just enough to get started with Rust. In the next quest, we'll be looking at the different data types available to us within Rust and how to declare variables. Till then, thank you so much.